Security and Development in the Horn of Africa, next on International Focus. The Institute of World Affairs at UWM and Milwaukee Public Television present International Focus, a global magazine linking Wisconsin and the world. Welcome to International Focus. I'm Robert Sigliano, Director of the Institute of World Affairs at UWM. For many Americans, the grisly events <coughs> chronicled in the film Black Hawk Down and stories of modern-day piracy frame their awareness of the Horn of Africa. There is, of course, much more to the story, a complex interplay between conflict, peace, human rights, and development that demands a more nuanced policy analysis. To help us explore the challenges facing people in this precarious region and the role the U.S. might play in helping to stabilize it, we're joined by Hamsa Warfa, founding president of the Institute for Horn of Africa Studies and Affairs, a national nonprofit organization whose mission is to document, research, and disseminate information on issues affecting the people in the Horn of African nations and in the diaspora community. Born in Somalia, he moved with his family to the United States in 1994 after escaping Somalia's civil war and spending almost three years in a refugee camp in Kenya. Inspired by the plight of the people in the Horn of Africa and the desire to improve the conditions in which they live, he helped found the Institute for Af Horn of Africa Studies and Affairs in 2008. Hamza, welcome to International Focus. Thank you. Great Hamza, I'm wondering, um, when we say Horn of Africa, what are we talking about? What, are the, what, are the, what makes up the Horn of Africa? Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for the uh, opportunity to be here with you tonight. Uh, this is a topic I feel uh, um, greatly um, on a personal level because I am both a uh, product of the United States and the Horn of Africa. One is my birthplace and one is my adopted home. Uh, so it's uh, great to be here. Uh, the Greater Horn of Africa encompasses uh, the countries of Somalia, Sudan, uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Uganda. Um, so it's a, it's a region that has been in turmoil for, for the past uh, several decades, I would say. What, so what um, uh, you, we hear, again, as we said in the opening, you sort of hear these sort of sensational headlines or events that come out of the region, largely the product of, 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 of conflict. Um, what, what makes the Horn of Africa distinctive in the sense that it, that it has had such a troubled history in the last, say, three decades? You know, this region uh, is beset with many challenges. Uh, one is the colonial legacy uh, with the carving of countries among uh, c different uh, people. Uh, for instance, uh, the Somali-speaking population have been uh, incorporated in part of Ethiopia, part of Kenya, part of Somalia, and this has ignited uh, never-ending wars uh, because you have communities that have been divided along uh, border, uh, arbitrary border lines. So that's an, uh, an issue. Uh, number two, uh, this is a region with full of arms, uh, where it's a lot easier to find uh, a gun than a piece of bread. Hmm. Uh, and the region has uh, unhappy masses, uh, as governments in the Horn of Africa lose uh, legitimacy among its people. So it's a historical legacy, it's a contemporary issues of uh, human rights violations, uh, governments losing legitimacy among its people, uh, insurgency, uh, rebels. Uh, for instance, Ethiopia is now uh, in producing large uh, rebel movements historically. Uh, in fact, the country never had uh, one peaceful transfer of power. Uh, and then you have Somalia in, in a situation where uh, a country without central government for over 20 years. Wow. Uh, mostly in the south, controlled by a terrorist organization, Al-Shabaab. Uh, so you have uh, all of these issues that affect both peace, development, democracy, and conflict. The, the international community is, is largely set up to deal with any of these problems by looking at a state. So they're looking at, say, a Somalia, or they look at Ethiopia, or Eritrea, Sudan, whatever it is. Um, but what you're saying is that, that that's, that's really not how to get out of these problems. It, it hasn't worked so far. And the reason is be, most of these countries, neighbors, are contributing to each other's instability. 
So you have uh, countries that are arming their neighbors, re rebels, or opposition. Uh, in the case of, for instance, uh, Ethiopia, Somalia, Eritrea, which I would say share not only this colonial legacy, but more importantly, contributing to this uh, each other's instability. Uh, you have rebel movements that are based in Asmara, that are against the Ethiopian government. You have Eritrean opposition, rebel movements based in Addis Ababa, uh, against, you know, uh, Eritrean uh, government uh, dictator. Uh, and then you have the lo lawlessness Somalia. So uh, it's, a, it's a regional issue. Uh, all of these conflicts are interlinked. Um, and they need a regional solution uh, rather than individual countries uh, focus and that has been the case for the past 20 years and hasn't really worked so far. And what, what, what prevents um, <coughs> uh, outsiders who want to help in the region, the United States or European countries, other African countries, what, what uh, prevents them from taking this regional approach? Uh, one is competing interests uh, by uh, external uh, foreigners. Uh, so, for instance, you have uh, Chinese influence in the Horn of Africa. Uh, their interests are quite different from the U.S. interests. Uh, you have other European countries who are also playing a significant role uh, in the affairs of uh, the region. Uh, and then the other issue is uh, there are so many players, uh, spoilers. So it's really difficult to bring all of these players, stakeholders, into one table so that they can discuss regional solutions. Uh, the other challenge is uh, each country ha has its own unique establishment of culture and government. And, uh, and because of that, colonial legacy are often suspicious about the ex you know external f uh, foreigners coming in and uh, playing role so a number of these issues are really uh, an issue that is uh, preventing a regional solution uh, but an example we have seen places where such a uh, such an effort have worked uh, in the case of the uh, inter uh, congolese inter dialogue which involved neighboring countries and was a blueprint for a conflict resolution in that area. So the, the, um, <coughs> it, it, it seems like if you, if you look at the different, each country has different factions within it, if from what you're saying, right. and they have their supporters across the border and other countries that they're also allied with, and, and it's very difficult to sort of untangle these relationships. It, it, is it the fact that, that um, there are more interests in instability now, though, in the region? I mean, does that suit people's interest? For some people, it does. Uh, often there are spoilers in any conflict area. Uh, but the biggest instability in the Horn of Africa is one that is unhappy masses. You have people that are not happy with their government, that are being suppressed, uh, as in the case in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, uh, in Somalia, where Al-Shabaab, uh, the terrorist organization uh, that has been controlling much of the southern Somalia are in control, where they ban, uh, really destroy the social fabric of uh, and the symbolism of Somalism. Uh, for instance, they um, changed the Somali flag, blue and beautiful flag, to uh, black with Islamic emblem. Uh, they said that the form of Islam that Somalis have been practicing for the last 13 centuries, after all, is wrong. So now they have to re-educate. <laughs> uh, they said that Somalia belongs to all Muslims, uh, rather than Somalis alone. So, for instance, a Pakistani Muslim or a Chinese Muslim is entitled to Somalia the same way Somalis are. Uh, so... You have these, uh, and of course, their ideology manifests it, you know, in, into a physical uh, terrorist activities. Uh, and most Somalis, majority of the Somalis, are do not subscribe to their ideology. So all of these issues are really uh, an obstacle to finding a regional solution. Uh, but with a strong emphasis uh, on conflict resolution. I think it can be done. Uh, the international community 
seems to be focusing more on militarized security issues only and uh, not so much democratization development those have uh, somewhat fell off the radar since post you know post 9/11 I want I want to I want to get into the the, the the possible routes to 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 solution or at least progress in the region but but you, you mentioned the the condition of the masses of the, the the peoples of these countries and maybe we could spend a little time first before our break just just to talk, give us a sense of what is life like for most of the people who live in the region what this uh, conflict means for the masses of this region is um, I can share my personal in family saga uh, to illustrate this. Uh, my father, my grandfather was displaced by war twice. My father was displaced by war twice. I was displaced by war in my tender years of uh, my teens. Uh, and my story is uh, not, it's not exception, it's the norm. Mm. Uh, so uh, you have massive, uh, you know, uh, horrific human rights violations taking place in Eritrea, uh, but more significantly in Ethiopia than any other place in the Horn, uh, where you have a population of 85 million people that are unhappy. Uh, the EPRDF, uh, who are in charge of the Ethiopian government, have basically said, uh, demonstrated the last two elections that uh, opposition have two choices. Either you submit or you rebel. So the political space uh, in Ethiopia have been closed. Uh, pretty much as uh, the situation in Eritrea. Uh, in Somalia, you have transitional government uh, that was formed in 2004 by a dozen warlords who have been terrorizing uh, the local population the last 20 years. Uh, so the people are unhappy with this transitional government. And that's why, despite the international recognition, they only control two blocks of Mogadishu. <laughs> two, two blocks. Two blocks. <laughs> in Mogadishu. In, the in Mogadishu. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, uh, it means uh, for the diaspora, for the masses, uh, it's a massive human rights violation. It's uh, refugee, it creates a humanitarian catastrophe as far as um, creating refugees, internally displaced uh, people. Uh, so this humanitarian crisis, uh, coupled with uh, this situation of, you know, never-ending wars have really taken a toll on the civilian population in the Horn of Africa. And, and there have been periods of drought as well, and uh, the drought, natural... The, I mean, the man-made uh, man drought and, uh, and, and you know, uh, natural drought are in combination are also uh, killing people in masses. Hmm. Uh, killing people in masses. Um, we just have a few, few seconds be be before the break. What, if you look at the conditions around Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, and Kenya, say, and, and Sudan, I mean, is is you see a lot of the same problems, or is it different? Yeah, it. B the, there are a lot of similarities in terms of uh, security and development. Uh, when each country, uh, with the exception of Kenya, uh, you have rebel move, uh, rebel movements that have uh, risen and are fighting against the government. Uh, number two, you have number of uh, significant number of people fleeing, fleeing from violence and persecution in these countries, um, and and these refugees and internally displaced are moving around in the Horn, where they are extremely facing uh, difficulties. Creating more pressures on those, uh, that, maybe more stable countries. Exactly. Um, we're just at our break, so to our viewers, we'll be back in just a moment on International Focus. The Institute of World Affairs presents our community with a range of public programs relating to global issues, U.S. foreign policy, and the world economy. For more information about the Institute of World Affairs, call 414-229-3220 or visit our website at www.iwa.uwm.edu. Welcome back to International Focus. We're talking about security and development in the Horn of Africa with Hamsa Warfa, uh, founding president of, the, president of the Institute for Horn of Africa Studies and Affairs. Hamsa, uh, before the break, you, you, you mentioned um, 
where some of the solutions might lie in, in this very, very difficult region. We, we talked about both the, the plight of, of, of the, the, ma the masses of the people that live in the region plus the in complex political and, and military and, and, and interactions between the, the, the countries, especially Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia. Um, so where do we go? We talked about the importance of a regional approach. Are we seeing that taking root? To find a regional solution, I think uh, it would need to start uh, within the three most troubled countries, as we just mentioned, Eritrea, Somalia, and Ethiopia. Um, there is that conflict, uh, border conflict between Eritrea and Ethiopia. It hasn't been solved, although the international community w uh, got involved. Uh, the commission that uh, was assigned to find a solution for Bedemi, that border uh, re and ca county that the two countries have been fighting over, uh, have been declared as Eritrea's. The problem is Ethiopia refused to accept the ruling of the international community. So I think the, the United States and the international community uh, should find solution between Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Eritrea, again, because each, other's, each country is contributing to each other's instability. Uh, the so they're, they're fighting over this border region, but on the other hand, they're, 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 they're fomenting uh, Instability wars. in each country. Yeah. Yeah, they are fighting proxy wars. So um, Eritrea has been uh, allegedly supporting the Ogaden National Liberation Front, uh, which has been fighting uh, with the Ethiopian government on, on the Ogaden region. Uh, they have been supporting the Oromo Liberation Front. Um, and on the other side, you have Eritrean, all Eritrean opposition groups based in Addis Ababa. That's their headquarters. So finding a solution for this border conflict it could have a potential uh, positive effect on of, you know, the regional uh, issues. That's one. Number two, we, when this Ethiopian, uh, when Ethiopian government came in power in 1992, the United States promised that without cooperation, Without democracy, there will be no cooperation with the Ethiopian government, the, EP, the ruling EPRDF. Uh, there hasn't been democracy in Ethiopia. Uh, the political space has been closed. Marginalized groups have been uh, sidelined. Uh, there have been massive human rights violations, uh, especially in the Ogaden region. Uh, we, we haven't addressed uh, the colonial legacy of this region uh, as far as the aspiration of a people and um, with the prospective secession of South Sudan. Uh, there is a potential uh, uh, risk in increase, escalate of these conflicts uh, of people that are aspiring to have self-determination. So uh, f democratizing and pressuring the Ethiopian government and pressuring uh, Eritrea to find a common solution for their border conflict and pressuring each country to, instead of uh, responding with oppressive tactics, responding the aspirations of these people would bring a solution to this region. The, the, um, uh, the region is also getting a lot of attention, especially from the U.S. Uh, military because of the potential links to uh, global uh, terrorist movements mm -hmm. and extremist movements. Um, it, has that been a positive thing for a region or a negative thing or, or both? I, I would say both. Uh, one, the, the biggest concern is Al-Shabaab, uh, and Al-Shabaab emerged out of the Islamic courts uh, who ruled the southern Somalia in 2006. Uh, and for six months they have brought peace and stability uh, in Mogadishu. They were funded by the powerful business community uh, in, you know, in Mogadishu. And concerned with extreme elements within the Islamic court, uh, Ethiopia invaded uh, Somalia with the support of the United States. It was that perverse strategy that have exacerbated the con uh, stateless condition in Somalia and, and created uh, this atmosphere uh, where uh, extreme radicalism can take place in Somalia. 
uh, the Al Shabaab gaining the support of uh, many Somalis, not because of their ideology, but because of their nationalistic fervor against Ethiopia, an arch enemy of Somalia. Uh, it was like uh, India sending 20,000 troops to Pakistan to stabilize Pakistan. So this was perceived very negatively in the uh, in the region. So Al Shabaab gained uh, great support uh, because of this uh, against Ethiopia uh, uh, fervor. And that allowed them to control most of southern Somalia. Uh, unfortunately, they have become a brutal terrorist organization. Uh, they kill women and children. Uh, they ban movies, music, sports. Uh, recently, they prohibited women to work. Um, so this, the, the, the crisis in Somalia starts with finding, creating, finding a political settlement and, uh, and forming a central government that can tackle issues of terrorism, piracy. Uh, so far, the focus has been more of a band-aid solution. We, the international community focused more on short-term band-aid-like solutions and not long-term uh, solution as far as stabilizing um, the situation in Somalia by f bringing all, by creating an inclusive uh, government in Somalia. As you know, the transitional federal government uh, is set to expire in August, and politicians, civil society organizations are getting up for yet another peace conference, the 15th attempt. Mm. Uh, so tackling, uh, uh, of course, the concerns of, of terrorism uh, is not only limited to Somalia, it has reached in, in the diaspora. The arrest is of uh, 30 uh, Somalis who are implicated in supporting al-Shabaab have really heightened those attention. Uh, so that's the negative side. On the positive end, uh, this have, uh, as you know, Somalia and rest of Horn of Africa have fell off the international radar uh, with the, uh, the Black Hawk Down and the withdrawal of the United Nations in 1995. Uh, this have brought back the attention of the international community. So Somalia is on the international radar now. Uh, so the positive end is that uh, money, including, including the U.S. government, are realizing that uh, the, the way to end the chaotic situation in the Horn of Africa, and more particularly in Somalia, is to find lasting, inclusive federal government in Somalia that can p protect its borders, uh, that can fight against uh, extremists, uh, that can fight pirates. As you know, pirates are considered as an, uh, are viewed favorably by many Somalis uh, because they claim to uh, prohibit or prevent um, illegal fishing. They are, uh, you know, believe they claim to be preventing uh, waste of you know toxics by. They bring some right. sort of authority in that area to that area. To right? that area. Which is better than nothing, I suppose. Better than nothing, and also it brings, uh, it's making many people to think about making a career shift. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but this is a short term. It's not going to bring a lasting solution to the region. Uh, to find a lasting uh, solution, uh, the, there's a need for political settlement uh, for Somalia and addressing the aspirations of the people in, in the home. We have just a couple minutes left uh, before, before we have to end. I, I'm wondering if you could comment some on what you think the, the role of the United States should be. I mean, what's your advice to, to the U.S. administration on, on its role? Well, as you know, uh, the United States uh, created a joint task force uh, based in Chaburi, uh, and the mission of this task force was to indirectly employ uh, different strategies aimed at containing international terrorism, uh, winning the hearts and the minds of the people, and containing Chinese influence in the region. Uh, it's a part of the AFRICOM, uh, and, uh, African Command, uh, which was created in 2007. I believe this was a positive uh, first step uh, with the creation of AFRICOM. Uh, I think it's a recognition that um, Horn of Africa and Africa in general and security issues are high priority now for the U.S. government. 
Um, so I think the United States must use its way to uh, influence and pressure the terrorists in the region, uh, especially in light of what has been taking place in the Middle East, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Egypt and in Tunisia, that you have, people have to, uh, governments have to be accountable to their people. Uh, Governments have to first get the legitimacy from their people before they try to get legitimacy from the international community. Um, so the short term, the U.S. ought to look for long-term solutions rather than short term. We have seen a number of times where we have tried to find a, a band-aid type of solutions for the Horn of Africa, and it hasn't, it hasn't worked. Hamza Warfa, thank you very much for, for helping us understand a very complex region. Hamza Warfa, the, the founding president of the Institute for Horn of Africa, Studies and Affairs. Thank, Thank you. you for being with us. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks. And to our viewers, we'll see you next week on International Focus. information about the Institute of World Affairs and its many programs, or to become a member of the Institute, call 414-229-3220, or visit us at our website, 